Hello, today we are doing 1-2 in Algebra 1. Our essential question is how can you use multi-step equations to solve real-life problems? All right, as we go through this, I'm going to go through these kind of fast because it is a video. You are able to stop or pause at any moment and copy some of this down. This is a good core concept to know. To solve multi-step equations, simplify each side of the equation if necessary. Then you're going to use the inverse operations to isolate the variable. So let's go ahead and get started with our first example. We have our original problem, which is 2.5x minus 13 equals 2. And remember, whatever we do to one side of the equal sign, we do to the other. And if you're kind of a visual person, you might even want to draw in the two sides so that you can visualize the two sides of the equal sign. First thing we want to do is undo that subtraction. So we're going to add 13 to both sides. And those 13s cancel each other out. And we're going to be left with 2.5x equals 15. Well, we want to get rid of that 2.5. So we're going to divide both sides by 2.5. And remember in algebra, now, to show division, we're going to use a fraction bar. Uh, x is going to equal 6. So you're going to want to go ahead and check that solution. So you go back to your original problem, 2.5x minus 13 equals 2. Take out the x, put in 6. You want to make sure that both sides of the equal sign equal each other. In this case, they do. You get 2 equals 2. So we're good. Here, we want to solve negative 12 equals 9x minus 6x plus 15. So we start by writing the problem down. If you notice that 9x and the 6x are on the same side of the equal sign, they can be combined. 9x minus 6x is 3x. So all we've done is combine like terms. Now we want to undo that plus 15. So that means that we need to subtract 15 from both sides of the equal sign. Negative 12 minus 15 is going to give me negative 27. The 15s cancel each other out because 15 minus 15 is 0. Now we want to undo that 3 times x. The opposite of times is divide. So you're going to divide both sides by 3, and you're going to get x equals negative 9. Again, we're going to want to check our answer. So you write down the original problem. You take out the x, in this case, in two places, and replace it with negative 9. You might want to go ahead and use your calculator to help you out on this one. But you're going to get negative 12 equals negative 12. It works out. We can be 100% certain our answer is correct. Take a second. Pause your computer, try these three problems on your own. When you're ready, hit start, and you can check your answers. On the first one, you subtract 3, divide by negative 2. On number 2, you're going to add 11, and then multiply by 2. On number 3, you're going to combine those like terms, get negative 12x plus 12 equals 18. Subtract 12, divide by negative 12, x equals 1 half. All right, this one, we have parentheses. Whenever you have parentheses, you're going to have to solve it using the distributive property. So whatever's on the outside of the parenthesis, you're going to multiply what's on the inside of the parenthesis. That 3 is not in the parenthesis, so we're not going to be multiplying that 3 at all. Just the 1 and the negative x. And when we do that, you're going to get 2 minus 2x plus 3 equals negative 8. Well, the 2 and the 3 are on the same side of the equal sign, so we can combine them. 
negative 2x plus 5 equals negative 8. Subtract 5 from both sides because we want to undo that plus 5. And you're going to get negative 2x equals negative 13. You're going to divide both sides by negative 2 because we want to undo the multiplication by negative 2. And you're going to get x equals 6.5. You want to go back and check it. So you write the original problem down, take out the x, and put in 6.5. Make sure you follow order of operations when you are checking it. All right, here are some that you can try on your own. Um, again, I would hit pause. All right, here are your answers. If you are unsure of those, come find me and we will work them out together. All right, word problem. We're going to use the table to find the number of miles X you need to bike on Friday so that the mean of the numbers biked per day is 5. One of the things that we always want to do is make sure we understand the question, mean. Mean is the average. That would be you add everything up and divide by how many there are. So we want to be able to add all of those numbers up, divide by five days, and that needs to equal five. So we want to use that definition of mean to write an equation. That's going to be my plan. And then we're going to go ahead and solve that. So let's see if we can add up all of our numbers. 3.5 plus 5.5 plus 0 plus 5 plus x. And divided by 5, because there are 5 days, equals 5. There's my equation. Combine all of your like terms. Well, we don't like that 5 in the denominator. That's divided by 5. To undo divided, you're going to multiply each side by 5. 14 plus x equals 25. It's already starting to look a little bit better. Subtract both sides by 14. And you get x equals 11. The last thing I want to do is ask myself, does that seem like a reasonable answer? And it does. All right. Got another word problem here. The formula D equals 1 half N plus 26 relates the nozzle pressure N in pounds per square inch of a fire hose and the maximum horizontal, that's across, distance the water reaches D feet. How much pressure is needed to reach a fire 50 feet away? So that distance is going to have to travel 50 feet. They're asking us to find N. So what I would do on this is plug in what you know, 50 equals 1 half N plus 26. And the answer is already shown right there going to be 48, you would subtract 26 by both sides, and then to get rid of that 1 half, you're going to multiply by 2. All right, take a second and pause. Try this one on your own. On this, the ticket price times the number of people who attended minus the amount of the loan is going to be our profit. It's kind of the amount of money made minus how much it costs is going to be what we have left over. What we have left over is our pro profit. And X is going to be the number of people who attend. So it's a good idea to tell what your variable is. So. $4 per person times X people. The people part kind of cancels off, and you're going to get 
4x minus 400 equals 100. Add 400 to both sides. Divide by 4. X is 125. So 125 people attended the play. You want to look back, make sure your answer is reasonable. And it is. All right. Take a second, pause, try this one on your own. On problems like this, it's always a good idea to draw a picture. So there's my rectangular pen to provide, let's see, and the pen should be three times as long as it is wide. So there's my width, and three times that would be 3W. Well, that means that this side right there also needs to be 3W. And that would be W as well. You're going to add up all of those sides together. So W plus W plus 3W plus 3W equals 96. Add your like terms, and you're going to get 8W equals 96. Divide both sides by 8. Your width is going to be 12. Your length is 3 times the width, so 3 times 12 is 36. Oops. So on this one, it's going to be 36 feet by 12 feet. All right, that's all we have today. Hope you enjoyed.